place where dreams are born and time is never planned. It's not on any chart. You must find it with your heart. Never, never land. In my career, I've I've been very lucky to work on a Broadway musical that was iconographic in the Broadway kind of idea. And Peter Pan uh, that I designed with Kathy Rigby, which was Tony nominated, uh, that is one of those shows that you think that um, it's, a, it's a magical place. You were honored in 2001 with a Emmy Award for your art direction of the A&E broadcast of Peter Pan. What quality set your design apart? Well, you know, that was a surprise in a way, winning an Emmy for Peter Pan, because Peter Pan, let's face it, was a Broadway show that went on tour. I was very lucky that year because it was the first year in the Emmys of what we call peer voting, where actually people in your peer group voted in your category. And I was up against a Cirque du Soleil show and the Grammys and the Oscars. And I feel what set Peter Pan apart was, again, the storytelling. It was a great honor. And I feel that it was a great thing for me because it was the intersection of my two careers in theater and in television. And it was like a theater thing that then got a television award. How weird is that, but how wonderful. <laughs> I started on a TV show called Babylon 5 about, I guess it's been about 15 years ago now. And we were the first show, it was a sci-fi show set in the future. And we were the first show to take advantage of computer generated graphics. And the idea of immersing characters into the backgrounds. Uh, you also did uh, worked with the Cosby Show. Well, working on the Cosby Show was really fun. I, I was the I, I was just out of working at NBC as a staff assistant art director. It was it really was the number one show at the time. It was so exciting to work on the number one show. The cast was so wonderful. I think that changed all of America and really the world. I mean. When I was in Mexico uh, working on Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, I remember looking at the television one time and it was a rerun of, of the Cosby show, you know, dubbed into Spanish and it made me laugh, but it was so universal. Yes. And that was the joy of working on that show and it was a beautiful show to work on. It's said that production designers create dreams and exciting places, but really a lot of making those dreams is the practical. So it's sort of the marriage of taking the idea of the play or the show or the script and trying to transport the audience into a magical or a new world. If it's a written story, like in this case, it's a series of poems that are webbed together by a kind of a, a wonderful journey. So what we did is, is then we look at all the different places that we're gonna be going in this story. And in collaboration with the director and the costume designer and the lighting director and the other creatives, the producers, we'll take that story and just work out some ideas creatively. And in this case, there's a lot of uh, sort of visual stuff in, in this world. So that's what's exciting to me about working on this. Interesting. Loving the Silent Tears is a unique challenge because the energy of the show is it's a one-time event. It's a very special event that's going to only happen one time. And to get it right in, with only one shot, it, it's hard, it's hard. The thing that, that we started out with working with was these beautiful poems and this idea of creating an event that took you on a journey. So how, how does that relate to me as a set designer, as a person who is designing a visual um, fabric for that event to happen? And the exciting thing about this show is, is being able to web it together on a journey. And I think that all the elements are really coming together. These are beautiful poems, and that, that's the inspiration for the whole show. I find every time I read them, it's like, oh, I didn't realize that. You know, so that's, that's good poetry, and that's good. That's when poetry speaks to us on a level that is not surface, and that's what's great about these poems. I find that too, by the way, even yeah. watching her speak. Yeah, supreme master, and, and for me, someone that sacrifices so much of their own personal life, I put them right up there with anyone in the great service of people, because basically they've taken their life and put it over to a greater good. And so for me, that's the message, is that we all can do that at a certain level. You know, I think that's her message. To me, it's about how do you make the world a better place. And I think that by able to manifest it in this work, 
of art, it will have a life after the show. And that's what's going to be exciting. Hi, my name is John Iacovelli. Be vegan, make peace. Thank you.